Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we glorify you and we praise you in this place. Lord, we magnify you and we exalt you. Lord, you loved us enough that you came to get us, Lord God. Lord, you delivered us and you rescued us. Hallelujah. Oh, if you can just picture where God got you from. If you can just picture where God got you from. If you can just go back in your mind and picture where he found you. What condition you were in when he brought you out. If you've never been anywhere you shouldn't have been, you have nothing to be thankful for. But you have been to some places. If there have been some times in your life that you were underneath the bottom. If there have been some times in your life when you couldn't picture what the next step would look like and God showed up. He said, because I love you, because I love you. Because I love you, because I love you, because I love you, because I love you. He loved you first. He loved you first. He loved you first. He loved you enough to go get you out of some mess. Loved you enough to go get you out of some drama and some trauma. Loved you enough to cover you. Loved you enough to deliver you. Loved you enough. He loves you. There's no way you can think over your life and not come to the conclusion, he must love me. He must. He must. The fact that you're sitting here on Trinity and Adams, in your right mind, kind of sober, means he loves you. Just turn and tell somebody, I know God loves me. I know God loves me. I know. I need to, there's no other explanation. It wouldn't make any sense unless God loved me. It just, it doesn't make sense unless God loves me. Hmm. And I'm thankful. And I'm thankful. And I'm thankful. Giving honor to God who is the head of my life, who is my rescuer, my savior, my redeemer, my strong tower, my rock when things get rough and weary. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the opportunity to share a word from the Lord. I am thankful for our pastor, Reverend Rosalind Kyle Brookins. Give her a hand. Praise the Lord for this divine opportunity. Hallelujah. You can't stay boring around Reverend Ross. She will get you fired up. Hallelujah. There's no room for boring at Walker Temple. Nothing boring in here. Hallelujah. When you have a fired up pastor, then it keeps us fired up. And so I thank God for this ministerial staff, for the musicians, for the choir, for the ushers, for the greeters, for the media. Amen. For everybody in the house. I'm glad you're here. Amen. We are indeed a family church. So just turn and tell somebody, I'm glad you came today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And glad to see Brother Roy. Hallelujah. Wonderful to see you. He's a triple threat in the kingdom, an actor, a singer, and a praise dancer. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The kingdom is excited about him and about each of us, all the gifts that we have. So thankful for my husband and my daughter and all of you that are my family in Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I might love as thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. God, give me the words and the spirit, the fire and the anointing to complete the assignment you have given me on today. God, I absolutely trust you to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. You heard the scripture earlier in your reading. I'm just going to focus on five verses. Exodus, the 14th chapter, 
And I'm going to read for you verses 10 through 15. Exodus 14, focusing on verses 10 through 15. If you're able, you may stand in reverence for the word of God. Exodus 14, it's in your bulletin, and I'm just going to read verses 10 through 15. As Pharaoh approached the Israelites, looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve and be slaves to the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to be slaves. Would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you when? The Egyptians you see when? You will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to what? Tell the Israelites to what? Tell the Israelites to what? The Lord had a blessing to the reading of his word. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our word for today is don't go back. Look somebody in the eye. Don't say nothing. Just look at them. Just look at somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because somebody in here has been thinking about going back. Somebody's been dipping and dabbling and going back. Somebody's been fantasizing about going back. Somebody went back last night. But it's a new day. And God sent me on assignment to tell you, don't go Hallelujah. I, I believe it's already confirmed. Somebody said I could sit down right now. Hallelujah. In this season in our country, we have been flooded with two messages from two political candidates, which will remain nameless. One says he wants to take the country back. He promises that if you join him, he'll take you back to the way things used to be. What an interesting thing to consider for those who are black and brown in America. What an interesting proposition for those who are women in America. Let us really think about if we want to go back to the way things used to be. Well, then there is another candidate who will remain nameless. And his theme is forward. He promises policies and programs that he says will advance us, that will be progress. He proclaims if you vote for him, he'll take you into new places that you've never seen before. Oh, as people who know what it's like to have a past when you've been marginalized and left out and discriminated, those who have been relegated to living in the margins, it's something to consider, this idea of moving in our text, we discover that we are not the first people who were left with this dilemma, whether to go back to the past or move forward into our future. There were a special people, a people God loved called the Israelites. God loved them, but some people still hated on them. Mm. Did we start off today saying God loves us? But some people still... Mm. God chose them, but some people still oppressed them. God wanted to promote them, but some people still wanted to keep them down. Does that sound familiar to anybody here today? Well, these special people called the Israelites were actually slaves 
They were enslaved by the Egyptians until God sent plagues to devastate their enemies. And God rose up leadership among them who would dare to stand up to the oppressors and demand liberation, demand the Emancipation Proclamation of their time. Does that sound familiar? Well, the Egyptians led by Pharaoh finally surrendered and they set the Israelites free. And this is where our story for today begins. At the beginning of the chapter, the Israelites were walking out of bondage with confidence. You know when you just got saved? Feeling confident. Somebody gave you a big Bible? Feeling confident. You know the summary of the Decalogue a little bit? Feeling confident. They had just gotten out. You ever met somebody who's been one week sober? Feeling confident. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But then... They saw the enemy behind them. And they forgot everything God had done for them. And they began to doubt the decision to leave slavery. They got saved, but then they couldn't pay their bills. They tithed, and then they got laid off. And they wondered, why didn't I just stay out in the street where I used to be? I'm sorry, I... I meant, why didn't we stay in Egypt where we used to be? Well, they aren't the last enslaved people to ask this question. Let's look at the history of Africans in America who were enslaved. There were those who were running up north to escape, but as soon as some left the plantation, they got scared. And they said, Why y'all bring us out here in this underground railroad? We got dogs after us. We don't know which way is north and my feet hurt. Maybe we should just go back to master. Maybe we should just go back to chains. Maybe we should just go back to the auction block. Isn't it incredible to imagine a people who have the opportunity for freedom but actually consider going back to bondage? Isn't that amazing? Well, before we judge them too harshly, let's be honest about the number of times we thought about going back. I don't know about you, but some of us have gone back to some bad relationships. I don't know if you saw this week, Rihanna and Chris Brown got back together again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of us have gone back to horrible jobs. Some of us keep calling fake friends. We know they're not our friend, and we keep, we know that's not, that's not even, you know good and well that ain't your friend. And you keep going back to fake friends. Some of us keep going back to crazy churches. You know it's crazy. You know, you know that is some straight madness up in there. And you pull up every week. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Some of us keep going back. We keep going back to getting high. Even though we end up feeling low. But we keep going back to getting high. Some of us, as soon as we get past the New Year's resolution, go back to overeating, go back to overeating, go back. In January, I'm going to be on a diet, but right now, hallelujah, I'm going to eat whatever I want to eat. Hallelujah. We go back to overspending, go back to procrastinating, go back to being a bully, go back to trying to control everybody and everything. Some of us go back to lying. You don't know how to tell the truth. Don't know how to, don't know how to tell the truth. It just don't even feel right coming out of your mouth. You don't even know how to tell the truth. We go back to losing our tempers. We go back to dishonoring our temples. How many times have we gone back to a life without prayer? Remember when you were fired up for God? Remember when you used to fast that one time? How, you can't remember the last time you fasted. Because you need your energy and your strength. <laughs> Hallelujah. Remember what it was like to go back to a time when you didn't worship? Go back to not reading the Bible. We get fired up and read it for a while, and then we get busy or sleepy. Hmm. My God, my sisters and my brothers, God has seen your past, 
But more than that, he has seen your possibility and he sent me here this morning to beg you, don't go back. Ah. Now, the amazing thing is the path to our path is a slippery slope. It's easy to go back. It starts with a small step. Just one text. How you doing? What you been up to? <laughs> it starts with one cigarette. I'm not going to start smoking again. Just today is a rough day. So I just, I'm only going to buy one. I'm only going to buy one. It starts with one day without prayer. And the next thing we know, we're right back where we started doing the same old thing with the same old people, going to the same old dirt. My God, my God. Yeah, Let me tell you how it happens. When you escape your old life, people and things will rise up to try to drag you back down. As soon as you get out, people who wasn't even interested suddenly get interested. Because some people don't like to see you free. Some people are bothered when you happy. You happy, they mad. You got good news, they feel horrible. There are those who like you bound because when you reject your faith, you depend on them. When you reject your faith, you don't make them feel bad about their own shadiness. We could just be shady together. It makes them look better. And so some people are going to rise up as soon as you get free and try to pull you back. But I want you to not be distracted or dismayed or discouraged when you see them coming. I want your hope to be in the Lord. But the Israelites became angry and they responded to their fear by being angry at Moses. You know what? It's easy to get mad at people. Right? You get me started. You could talk about some people who did something to you 10 years ago. Seven, look, the way they used to treat me on that middle school playground, girl, let me tell you. We can tell the story about what other people have done to us. But God says to us exactly what Moses said to the Israelites, settle yourself. Calm down. Quasi's uncle would say, chill out. Turn and tell somebody, chill out. Be confident in the Lord. God assures you of the promise that whatever the situation, I'm going to bring you out. God is saying, be bold in the face of your temptation because I'm here to deliver you. And I want you to know the Israelites felt cornered by bad options on every side. They were surrounded by rocks on one side and Egyptian forts on the other side, Egyptian soldiers behind them, and the sea was in front of them, and so they had nowhere to look but. Sometimes God will orchestrate it for you to feel cornered just so you will look. Because some of us, when we can see our way clear, we're so confident we don't never look. And so we feel cornered. We feel like the only option to get my bills paid, the only option to hold on to part of this person, my only option for not being alone, my only option for feeling better is to go back. But God is saying to you, look up. Help is on the way. Look up. Help is on the way. Look up. Help is on the way. Now, one of the keys to not going back is you need to understand why you keep going back. If you don't understand why you keep going back, you're going to keep going back. Our reasons for going back are not very different from the Israelites. I want to offer to you that you go back for two reasons, fear and familiarity. Fear and it's familiar. We can't imagine that things could be better in the future, so we're afraid of walking away from the past. 
We are afraid of change, afraid of being broke, afraid of being alone, afraid of being silent, afraid of the emptiness, afraid of failing, afraid of succeeding. But no matter what you fear, don't go back. Some of us are pulled back because it's comfortable, it's familiar, we're used to it, they know us. They know what to say and how to say it. The past is convenient. Sometimes you could just send a one word text and you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. It's easy, it requires little effort and many of us convince ourselves that it's not that bad. It could be worse. Huh? It's not that bad. Just look at somebody with a smirk, just smirk at them. Hallelujah. Don't go back. So what are the lessons the Israelites give us to help us from going back? The first thing is the Israelites had to remember what we have to remember, and that is you are not alone. You're more likely to go back when you're feeling lonely and empty. And God is saying you have a God who is on your side, who sits high and he looks low. God is saying, if I am for you, who can be against you? God is saying, I am Jehovah Jireh. I will be your provider. God is saying, I'm Jehovah Shalom. I am God, your peace. God is saying, make me your alpha and your omega, your beginning and your ending. God is saying, I'm able to cancel every curse of the enemy. God said, I will bless you so you don't have room to be blessed anymore. God said I made you the head and not the tail above and not beneath. God said I made you an overcomer. God said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I am that I am that I am. Don't go back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy wants you to feel like you're by yourself so that you go back, but don't fall for it. There is a God. There is a God. There is a God. The next thing that we learn from the Israelites in verse 13 is when you're not sure what to do, when you feel like you're being drawn back to your past ways. The best thing to do, stand still. Instead of retreating to the past, wait for God's instruction. Don't pick up the phone. Don't drive by their house. Stand still. When you feel the force is trying to pull you back. We've heard the gospel song that says, what do you do when you've done all you can? You just stand. You just stand. You just stand. And so God is saying, I'd rather you stand still than go back. You confused, stand still. Hmm. You caught up, stand still. You bewildered, stand. You catching feeling, stand still. It'll pass. <laughs> it will pass. Hallelujah. Read a psalm. Get yourself together. Hallelujah. It will pass. The third thing we discover from the Israelites is we learn from God's response to Moses what we need to do once God gives us instructions, even when we feel afraid. In verse 15, God tells Moses to command the people, forward march. There comes a time when you have to move. You see, courage is not the absence of fear, but the willingness to move forward in spite of fear. It's natural to feel scared, but Moses had already been told what to do, and Moses was standing still praying. And God said, 
In colloquial English, what you still standing there for? What are you doing? I'm waiting for you, Lord. I already set up the job. You haven't turned in the application. God said too many of us are praying for things that he's already done. He said, I already did my part. Forward march. Hallelujah. There comes a time when standing still is nothing but fear. You already know what you're supposed to do. God already told you what you're supposed to say. And you asking for more confirmation. He said you already know. Forward march. Even though you're scared, do it scared. Show up scared. Don't, don't let fear keep you at home. Don't let fear keep you in a place that you know is sabotaging your spirit. He said you might not start off marching. You might start pressing. You might start pushing. You might start praying and leaning forward. You might start crawling forward. You might start inching forward. But I promise you the longer you keep pressing and crawling and pushing, your confidence will grow. And the next thing you know, huh? you know you'll be marching forward hallelujah turn and tell your neighbor keep watching I'm gonna march any minute hallelujah hallelujah I might look insecure now but it's only October 2012 I might look nervous now I might look a little I might look uncertain now but you catch me around December you catch me around January 2013, ha! You know it doth not yet appear what you shall be, but you gotta start somewhere. So start somewhere. The fourth thing the Israelites teach us about not going back is that it doesn't matter what it looks like. The Israelites were outnumbered and outpowered. They had no training. They had no weapons. They had no chariots. They just a bunch of escaped slaves <laughs> walking through the wilderness. And behind them is one of the greatest armies. They are with chariots and weaponry and they've been through basic training and they're hot on their trail. But God. But I want you to know on today, if you haven't lived long enough to experience it, to know there will be some times in your life when you will have to compete with people whose parents had more training than you, more education than you, a better house than you, more status than you, more connections than you, more network than you, but God, God is the one who gives promotion that no man can hallelujah hinder. And so God said it don't matter what it looks like, it don't matter what they say about you. You might not have the right outfit. You might not know the king's English. But God has decided to put his hands on you. And when God chose you, nothing else matters. I have been born to win. I am victorious no matter where my feet go. Every place my feet trod. God has already given it to me. God has decided that I won. So if God says I'm the winner, nothing else matters. God is for you. Who? Who can be against you? Who can be against you? Turn and tell somebody you were born to win. You were born to win. It doesn't matter what it looks like. 
It's a setup for my hookup. <laughs> you see, it doesn't matter what it looks like, because if it looked like success, God would not get the glory. If it looked like, oh yeah, of course, that would happen. That's not a miracle. And God is looking over the earth, looking for a place to explode in miracles. God is looking for some people who he can bless, who he knows will give him the glory. He's not looking for people who will say, oh yeah, I did that all by myself. You nobody helped me. Nobody helped me. I just pulled myself up by my bootstraps. God said, I'm looking over Los Angeles, looking over Walker Temple for somebody with a humble heart who will just say, God, will you use me? I'll give you the glory. Use me. I'll give you the praise. Use me. I'll lift your name. You want God to do something awesome in your life? Humble yourself. Oh, Jesus, humble yourself and say, God, I guarantee you, I'll give you the glory. I don't want any other credit. I want to God be the glory for the great things he has done. Turn and tell somebody, I might not look like much, but it's a setup for my hookup. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Next, God is saying for the Israelites to not go back. There's just two more, y'all all right? Amen. He said, look for dry ground. Too many of us go from one storm to another. Uh, let me help you. You didn't go back to your ex you just went to somebody who act like your ex. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's all. You stopped overeating, but now you started smoking more. <laughs> now you don't cuss people out in the street. You curse them in church. But you do come to church. You do come to church. I'll give you credit. You do come to church, but your mouth hasn't changed. Your mouth, same mouth, different location. Same mouth, different location. God said, in order for you not to go back, you need to look for dry ground. Stop going from drama to trauma, from trauma to drama, to mess, to mess, to mess, to mess. Because when you do that, you're just going back. It just looks different. And so God said in the name of Jesus, look before you leap. Before you step into that. Before you proclaim that this is the one that God has sent me. Is that you talking or God talking? Look for dry ground. Hallelujah. Dry ground is not shady. Look somebody in the eye and say, don't go back to that. Finally, some of you are bewildered and frustrated because you say, I want to go forward, but I don't know what to do. I just can't see my way out of here. God said, Tamer, tell them on today that I am working on their behalf in invisible ways. They've been waiting for something they could see, but when it's the hand of God, you need to trust that it's moving, it's shaping, it's molding, it's rocking. Even when you can't see God, God said, I'm already working it out for your good. And so God, sent an angel before the Israelites. The Israelites couldn't see the angel, but they had to go. 
Hallelujah. They had to go forward. They couldn't go back. They were being led by warrior angels and they didn't even know it. And then when the enemy appeared, God redirected the angel. And he said, go from in front of them to go stand between them and their enemies. When the enemy tries to reach them, he said, put a cloud between them so they won't even be able to see where the Israelites are. And I came by here to tell somebody, I don't care who's been on your trail. I don't care who's been talking about you. I don't care who doesn't like you. They can't even see you. They can't even catch up with you. They can't even manipulate you. They can't even control you. And so he says in verse 13, hallelujah. In verse 13, he says, take a good look at these Egyptians. Because today is the last day that you're going to see them. He said, take a good look at these haters because today is the last day you go see them. Take a good look at your naysayers because today is the last day they're going to run your life. And God told me to tell you, you've been going back because you haven't really looked at the stuff you've been going back to. He said, I'm going to shine a supernatural light on them. And when you see them under the divine power of Jesus Christ, you're going to recognize they have nothing to offer you. Ah, oh, when you see it with God's eyes, you're going to recognize they don't really fulfill you. God said when you see it with God's eyes, you're going to see how small they are and how big God is. Ah, yeah. And you're going to say, why did I waste all my time dealing with that foolishness? I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Finally, let me tell you this. Africans in America, when we were escaping from the plantation, we used something called the Underground Railroad. And one of the leaders of the Underground Railroad was Harriet Tubman. And they called Harriet the Moses of her people. Now Harriet loved the Lord. Now y'all excuse me, she loved the Lord. But Harriet did carry a rifle. <laughs> she had God in her heart. <laughs> ah! Because she knew some of y'all gonna get scared and you're gonna wanna turn back. And if you go back, we all gonna suffer. So nobody on my watch is going back. Hey! God said some of us, some of us just needed somebody who was willing to fight for us. And before I met my dear husband, I was in a bad relationship. And the relationship was over. I was free. I was free. I could be honest with y'all. I didn't tell Quasi I was going to tell this story, but I was free. Okay, all right. Hallelujah, I was free. And then a lady at my church was getting married. Oh, Lord. Oh, I sat in her wedding. Just feeling miserable, Reverend Ross. I just sat there. Because you know when you're young, you have a timetable in your head. When I'm 18, I'm going to do this. When I'm 21, I'm going to do this. At 23, I'll do this. And then I'll have twins at 24. And then 25. And then 26. And then and I'm sitting in a church watching a wedding. 
And the bride is not me. I'm not even a bridesmaid, y'all. I'm just sitting there. And the longer I sat there, the more I thought about going back. The longer I sat in that church, the more I wondered what was it I didn't like him. Why, why, why did it end anyway? I mean, he really was a nice guy. The more I sat there, I started picturing my wedding gown. <laughs> And I just, need to, I'm with, I just need to call him and figure this out huh? because hallelujah, my wedding is next. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and if anybody here knows my mother, you know she got a Harriet Tubman spirit. <laughs> you know she's a soldier. <laughs> ah, God. <laughs> when I got out into that parking lot of that church, <laughs> And before I called him, I had the good sense to call her. <laughs> I was sitting in that parking lot just crying, just crying. I just need to call him. And I'm like, where are you, Tamer? I'm at this wedding. It was really beautiful. And my wedding is next. <laughs> and as if she had the Bible in one hand, and a rifle in the other. My mother said to me, Tama, your destiny is greater than your circumstance. Your destiny is greater than your circumstance. Your destiny is greater than your circumstance. Don't go back. Hallelujah! 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 And so God sent me here today to be your Moses. I don't know what kind of mama you got. I don't know if she living or dead. I don't know if she know you thinking about going back. But God sent me here to tell you your destiny is greater than your circumstance. Your destiny is greater than your circumstance. Don't go back. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Turn and tell somebody I'm not going back. 